Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about the brand as we know as Babolat. The Americans call it Babolat. The French actually call it Babola. Americans, Babolat. It is wrong. It's Babola. Babola. Okay? All right. So, moving on. So, it's a very, very old company. It's over a hundred years old. Still owned by a person named Babolat. His name is Eric Babolat. And I actually had the pleasure of speaking to him before a few years back over in their Colorado headquarters. Um, he was launching that play racket that didn't do very well. Uh, but, hey... We, we got it through our system like a Fitbit and we moved on and they don't exist anymore. But that's a different story. Uh, but we we're talking to Eric about like what happened, what made you famous, how, how did you do it? How did you get so big in the racket world? Because they've always been huge in natural gut. They've always been known for the best natural gut and some strings here and there. But they basically went from, you know, basically nowhere to be found to the number one uh, racket brand um, a few years back and held that number one for over 10 years, I want to say. Um, but Eric basically said, well, we got lucky with signing uh, Andy Roddick, right? Little Kim Kleister's there. Uh, can't forget Carlos Moya. But his thing was, we got really, really lucky with one guy. And it was this kid from Mallorca. As you guys know, as Rafa. Like he was very, very lucky, he says, that he signed this guy. He is who, he is who put Babalot, Babala on the map, right? Gave it superstar status, ramped it to number one, right? They are great. They owe everything to Rafa because they are like the Nike of tennis rackets now. Nobody does, I mean, no, no racket company in history went so fast, so far than Babolat. And even Eric Babolat attributes it, attributes it to Rafa here. All right. So I'm going to be talking about the companies, what they do well, what they don't do so well today. Um, as we know, they do rackets really well. This Aero Pro, definitely top two racket right now in sales nationwide. Top selling racket, great characteristics. You know about this racket because I've talked to you about it before in the past. Great spin. Um, Rafa's face is on it. Gotta be good, right? This racket revolutionized spin. They call it the spin machine for a reason. So, number top two racket in the nation right now. Pure drive, probably the third number three in the world right now in terms of sales or nationwide. Um, Great control, good power, uh, good plow through. Andy Roddick put this racket on the map um, and it's still a top three racket today, right? So the new thing that what they did is actually made this way better. You know, those that first rendition of the strike was pretty much garbage, that black one with the red. I don't know why they even made that racket, but at least with that Project 1.7 and Gen 2, uh, they actually made a good racket. And now we have Gen 3. Um, still, still, finally, they get better with these control rackets. And I'm glad that, you know, they actually thought about the racket and made some minor, minor changes that made this racket better. But, you know, it's a far cry from that Gen 1, which was garbage. And they actually were smart and they signed this guy, Dominic Team. 
they're counting on him to basically be the next Rafa whenever Rafa wants to hang it up, which might be a few years, uh, maybe five more French Opens he will have under his belt before uh, he's all said and done. All right. So they do rackets extremely well. Uh, there's also a VS version of this and a VS version of this that came out this year. Those are trying to trying to get a little grasp and a little hold, but um, I think those will get there too. Um, quality control is a little on the iffy side, but not horrible, not horrible. They also do light rackets really well. As you guys know, this G Lite is, is my pick for that 12 year old going into the first uh, adult racket, nine ounces great all-around light racket um, i recommend this highly to anybody who's like 12 years old and uh, ready for that first adult racket plays super super well um, they do great kids rackets um, these real graphite rackets that are 26 uh, 25 and even that kind of a hybrid racket that's half graphite at 23 that pure drive very very good um every kid pretty much uses those that's serious about the game um they do a great job with these rackets i don't think anybody else in the industry um, does junior rackets as well as babylon so we know that they do rackets well they do an outstanding job with these rackets now what is babylon known for well, they're known for gut. They're known for the best natural gut. So they're known for over a hundred years of producing that gut. You know, the thing that I failed to mention in that last video about gut is, well, they call it gut for a reason, right? It comes from the gut of a cow. That's why they call it gut. So anyways, back to the string. This best gut made, we all know that. It's an industry standard uh, known, known fact, all right? Nobody who plays with this, you know, doesn't love it. We all love this stuff, all right? Now, before I start with other things, they actually make a really good um, polyester. This RPM is definitely top two or three in the industry in terms of sales. It's a very consistent string. Um, Rafa is touted at using this, not sure about that, but um, it's good overall. It's a great in hybrid, it's great straight up. They've started making various renditions of this uh, with the team version, a dual version. Um, now they're adding like a, a spin version. Um, I don't know, I love the original more. That spin really notches too fast and basically stays too fast whenever it moves and shifts. So I I don't like that string. I did a video on that string and I really don't didn't like that string. Uh, but the original is the best. Now the Addiction and the Excel. You know they're not my favorites, uh, but they're out there. I mean I sell it when people ask me about it. Um, the Excel I like a little more than the Addiction. I mean, these are just, you know, I call it white bread. There's nothing super special about them, um, except that they're made by Babala. And, you know, there's many other strings out there that's similar. So, I mean, I think Babala should concentrate on maybe making better synthetics because this is getting old, okay? It's time to move on. Uh, it's not gut. All right. So lately, for some reason, these grips aren't doing very well. Like the this Syntec grip, um, I'm not sure if they change manufacturers, but they feel thinner and harder and not as tacky. So I I don't know. I haven't been selling them. They they just something's wrong with them now. Um, so I don't understand what happened there. So I don't I don't sell many of these anymore. So we, we leave those out. Um, this Syntec Pro Feel. Oops, I threw the wrong one out. No, this is it. 
So this Syntec Pro Feel is their new grip, All right? Not a fan. Again, feel is off. Um, when you put it on, it doesn't want to come off. So when I go back and change this, it's going to take me 10 years to take it off. I, I can't be wasting 10 years to take off a replacement grip. So I don't know why you made this. That skin feel was wonderful and you discontinued it. Um, I don't know what you guys are thinking. So the overgrips, I don't carry your overgrips. I don't carry Babala's overgrips because there's nothing special about them. I mean, Wilson Pro Overgrips number one, I sell a ton of those. Um, I don't get much, many people asking for Babala overgrips. So I, I don't even bother now. It's been about three years since I've carried one. My favorite one though was they wrapped each one of them in a three pack and they made it smell like lemon. For those of you people who got HO, the hand odor that I was talked about in one of my videos, that was good for you. When you sweated into that, it smelled like joy lemon detergent in your hand, which was great for me, right? I like that, but they discontinued it. Um, but yeah, whatever. But that was my favorite one. I don't care their overgrips. Um, let's talk about bags, actually. They finally made really, really good bags. I would say in the last couple generations, you know, these are wonderful. Like, I would say this is the industry standard in bags. Like, this is just a normal six pack that just came out. Um, and you got that half with the foil there. So it's even foil color, so you don't have to guess that the rackets need to go there. The other side is for whatever else you want. Shoe pouch goes there. I don't know, whatever else. Your purse, your pants, whatever you want to put in here. Goes on the other side. A little shoe pouch with the air hole there for your shoes. A little handle for when you throw in your car and you pull it out. Uh, even have a hard, I love this hard thing out here that you can throw your wallet in if you want. Wallet and keys, cell phone go right here. Ooh, look at that. They even have a zipper for whatever small you want to put in there. So they've given a lot of thought into these bags. Um, and I'm glad they did that. Oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, I don't like this feature. I like that when the zipper actually stops, this zipper does not stop. It's got no zipper stop. That was a problem with those backpacks. So I don't like it when it does that. How about, let's see if they actually fixed it with this one. So I remember the first couple generations, you know, you, you get one of these and then you go like this and the, the zipper would just keep running, right? So if you're riding your bike and you had too much back here, it would just open, right? But look, they, they actually thought about it and it doesn't open on this. So I'm glad they made that change. They put some padding here on your back, right? So you don't get bruised up by your racket and the signature these are the only ones that, these are the only guys that does this they put a little handle holder for your racket so that's ingenious guys babalot ingenious for doing this so i'm glad um, they actually thought about what people say uh, took our concerns into consideration and uh, made these changes so that's a decent bag all right so are we ready for shoes? I got Scary Terry here for you, right? That's supposed to be like the top three shoe, the number three shoe in the nation in terms of, um, you know, best overall in that tennis magazine. Um, I wore these and they're actually okay. They're okay. The only problem with them is, I don't know what, maybe Babylon can't measure things because I usually wear a 10 and a half and I had to get a, what size is that? 11 and a half to fit me. 
So, but historically it's kind of been that way. I remember when those first Pro Pulse came out, the Andy Roddick shoe with the strap, right? The guy was gonna get me a pair to try on and he asked me what size I was and I said, well, 10 and a half and 11, 10 and a half is fine. He's like, I'll get you a 12. And I'm like, a 12? He's like, yeah, they're running a size and a half too small. And I'm like, how the heck does that happen? So, I mean, that ran on for two years, three years maybe, but um, they can't seem to get the sizing right on these shoes. So, um, the other thing is they don't guarantee these shoes in regards to fit. So, if you buy these shoes, you walk out with them, you get on the court, you get a blister, your heel hurts, you get bruising, can't feel your foot. It's kind of too bad when it comes to Babylon because they have no fit guarantee. Um, you buy it, you use it, it's pretty much yours. So, you know, so I don't know why Babylon actually makes shoes. You really should be out of the shoe business if you're not going to guarantee the fit because all the major players out there, um, hey, they guarantee their shoes. You got 30 days with Mizuno. You got 30 days with Asics. You don't like them, you bring them back. You get a refund, all right? So I don't understand uh, why you're making shoes, right? It doesn't make sense. All right, so Babolat. This Star 5 was like an industry standard for, for oh, freaking years, a long time. Um, they decided to kill the machine uh, two years ago. Uh, and make a new machine and I guess they screwed it up uh, there's some flaws with it and they're still trying to work it out it's been about a year and a half now and they're still trying to work the flaws out so there really is no Babolat stringing machine that's new on the market today uh, but hey these star fives were great when they were still uh, selling them so there's not much to say on Babolat clothing they make a bunch of t-shirts um, some hats, um, maybe some shorts. It's kind of like tchotchke wear, swag wear, nothing, nothing to write home about. So yeah, really no clothes there to, you know, talk about. So Babolat, with the story past, living on the uh, natural gut strings for 100 years plus, um, great tennis strings. You guys did a masterful job of making those rackets. Uh, we need to improve on over grip, replacement grip. Get those shoes out of here, okay? Uh, stop making shoes, all right? Um, maybe make a better stringing machine or come out with one that doesn't, you know, fall apart or can't be used. Um, but hey, you're like Nike. Your superstar, your Babolat. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.